Hello, and welcome back to the channel. And if you've not been here before, welcome to my shed. Now, in the last video, and I'll put a link to it underneath, um, I set everyone a bit of a challenge. Under this, this lockdown thing, we can't actually go very far. A lot of us can't get to the woods uh, because we are locked down. We're restricted to our home location. However, we can get a walk or a run or a cycle for up to one hour every day. So what I thought I'd do is set you a challenge. Get to know your local area. A 30 minute walk from your home marked on a map gives you a radius. Get to know everything in that radius. Now, what I also said was I put up a few little videos of plants and things that you can forage things that I find in my area that you might find in yours that might be useful to you as a bit of a guide a bit of a steer of what's out there and where to find it now obviously with this foraging thing we have to be a little bit careful because there are things out there that can do us harm and we need to think about that very seriously anything that you collect obviously always make sure you 100% positively identify it before you consume it if you're not sure bin it okay also make sure you wash stuff a lot of the stuff the very nature of what we're doing in, in this challenge is you're going to be in a urban environment while you're gathering stuff an urban environment says there's humans and all the stuff that goes with humans around dogs rats etc so make sure you wash everything before you consume it Going back to the 100% positively identifying it, I've tried to keep this as simple as possible and the, the plant choices that I will show you are gonna be simple to identify ones. But get yourself some guidebooks. There's plenty of them out there. Some of them are absolutely excellent, really good. Not only will they give you descriptions, photographs, diagrams, the time of year, the type of habitat, also with some of them they will give you very good ideas for how you can use them different recipes and things so they're more than worth the cost now I've got quite a few uh, that I use as reference and what I'll do is I'll put a list of ones in the description box down below so that you can see the ones that I tend to use the ones that I found are good over the years and perhaps you can pick yourself up one or two of those just to make sure that you get it right And as well as it keeping it simple, I will also show you some simple ways that you can use some of the food. Some will be my recipes, some of them will be other recipes from some of the books. And if I do use somebody else's recipe, I'll, I'll credit it so that you can look it up and get the recipe yourself. And also in this video, I'll try and keep things super simple gear wise. All you're gonna need is something to collect your stuff in. in my case I'm going for one of my little opportunist pouches of which there will be a, a how-to also coming up on the channel and perhaps a little pocket guide this little Collins gem food for free is an excellent resource and it's big enough just to tuck in a pocket you can take it anywhere and it's there as backup So in this video, I thought I'd keep it really simple and I'd go to a park, a public park. My main reason being was that public parks, most towns tend to have them. What I was looking for in particular was a particular type of tree and it's a tree that you'll find in parks and also one that you'll find in, in the woods. But this time of year, the leaves on a lot of the trees are just opening out and they are really, Good to eat. The common beech 
uh, is a good example. So you've got a very nice uh, texture to it, a bit like lettuce, a slight little bit of sourness to it, and it's good. But for this particular recipe that I'm gonna do, I needed a, a, a lettuce type substitute that would go well with another ingredient. And I was, what I was looking for was the common lime tree. And I put the, the Latin name underneath. It's easy to recognize. It's pretty common in parks and in woods and the leaves taste just great. The tree is fairly easy to identify, particularly the, the large mature ones. The bark tends to be a, a gray color. Um, quite often they have uh, lots of growth around the bottom, brown colored twigs coming out. And you'll get the bunches of leaves opening out and the actual buds that they come from are usually colored red. So they'll have a little bit of red on the base of the leaf where the bud has actually opened out. The leaves themselves, soft, green and heart shaped. Now, as I said, the common lime leaf has got quite a delicate flavour and to go with that I wanted quite a bold flavour. And the plant I've gone for is something called a three-cornered leek or three-cornered garlic. It's one of the allium family, so it's uh, an onion technically. You can use the bulbs, you can use the flowers, you can use the stems. In this one we're going to use the leaves and the stems of the flowers. It's an invasive species, it's, it's not from originally from the UK, it came from the Mediterranean. It's got a really good fresh garlicky flavour. It's fairly common in southern Britain and I found it uh, in the West Country, loads of it in, in Devon, Cornwall. Also up in Kent and Sussex, I found it on the coast areas there and we've got quite a bit of it growing around where I am. It's easy to recognise, um, it's got little white flowers. It could almost be like a bluebell, except for the flowers, instead of being around the stem at the top, they actually open out from the top. And you get three little flowers, four little flowers, sticking out from the top. One of its other common names is a snowbell, because it looks quite similar to a bluebell, but it's white. As another guide, you have the unmistakable smell of garlic with it, which in the, the other plants that are out there that look similar, um, but are poisonous, the smell of garlic, those don't. So it's another easy guide. The other thing with the three-cornered leek is they're a ground dwelling plant so make sure you're extra careful with washing them particularly in the urban areas um, i found mine uh, in a little row between a couple of houses on the way back from the park so i made sure that i've given them a thorough wash Now, as far as storage goes, I picked mine yesterday, ready for use today, and they'll store in the fridge overnight. And all I do with mine is I put them in a little container like this, layered with a little bit of tissue paper, some kitchen roll, a little bit of water in there, and then place the stuff that you've picked on the top once you've washed it, cover it with another layer of uh, kitchen paper, a little bit of water on there, pop the lid on, stick it in the fridge, and they'll keep like this, two or three days. It was the way when I was working in kitchens as a chef um, a lot of the restaurants I worked used to buy in a lot of these foraged ingredients and that was how we would keep them fresh because you paid an absolute premium for them um, and what you couldn't afford was for them to wilt. So little top tip these will keep for two or three days just in a little bit of wet tissue paper in a Tupperware in the fridge. So all I'm going to do with these is make a very simple salad. I've got my lime leaves and my three cornered leek in there. I'm then going to use my little mini wanigan and a bowl and a few of the ingredients from in here to knock up a quick salad. So the first thing I'm going to do 
take my lime leaves and I'm just going to tear them up and throw them roughly into my bowl. As I do that, I'm tearing off any of these stalks that might be a little bit woody. What I want is the, the actual nice soft leaves. And next I'm going to take my three cornered leeks. You can see these little clusters of white flowers on the top. And I'm just going to sort through, make sure there's no slugs or dead bits or anything that doesn't look particularly good to eat. And then all I'm going to do with these is just going to chop them up finely to mix in with my lime leaves. And as you're doing this, you get a really strong hit of garlic. And I'm going to chop up the flowers as well, because the flowers are edible too. And then with that lot chopped up, I'm just going to add this straight into my lime leaves. And then I'm going to dress the leaves and for that I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of olive oil and it literally is a couple of drops that's all we need and then I'm going to mix those round just so everything gets that little bit of coating of oil do my best to keep it in the bowl And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt for my little spice rack. And that's it, done. It took <clears throat> a couple of minutes, quite literally, and it is absolutely delicious. Packed full of natural goodness, packed full of flavour, easy to gather easy to recognize a really good start to your foraging journey absolutely delicious So there you go, first of my little quick guide to foraging. Those particular plants probably only going to be around another one or two weeks, certainly in this area, it tends to go quite quick. But as I said, it's a nice simple, very tasty start to your foraging journey. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then remember to hit the like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me over on Facebook, just search for Greencraft, or on Instagram where I am greencraft underscore zero one. You can also pop over to my Etsy shop called Greencraft Shop where there's a selection of items that I make and sell, including the Greencraft patch and the Greencraft mug and a number of little pouches, etc. The shop has been very, very busy. If you're waiting on resupply, it's not far off. I will be getting another load of stuff made up in the next few days, ready to go up onto the shop. You can also help support the channel if you are able by visiting my Patreon page. It doesn't cost a great deal. There are a few benefits to it as well, but more importantly, you're helping towards the development of the channel. I'll put links for all those things in the description box underneath. I've been Neil. Until next time, stay safe.